You see, MSI is one of those companies that make sure they're always on the cutting edge of gaming tech. So if there's such a thing as a laptop that can run VR, you can bet MSI is gonna make one. Yes, the launch of NVIDIA's mobile Pascal-based GPUs made the concept of a slim, super portable, VR-ready laptop no longer the stuff of science fiction. Not that many people were writing science fiction about that. Most of it's about spaceships and such. But anyways, the point is the GS63 VR Stealth Pro looks like your standard slim and light notebook, but it's actually a beast in sheep's clothing. So let's confront it about that deception. Why y'all's lying, man? Why you always lying? Yes, the Stealth Pro looks like it shouldn't really be able to power a super compelling gaming experience, yet, as you'll see, it clearly does. So let's look at why that is. Inside is an Intel i7-6700HQ Skylake processor, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory, expandable up to 32 gigabytes, and the star of the show, the GTX 1060, and that's the six gigabyte VRAM variant to boot. Nvidia is no longer putting the M on mobile variants of their chips, trying to highlight the fact that Pascal can bring desktop gaming power to notebooks, and as you'll see with our benchmarks, it looks like that's what Pascal does. First, let's finish off the other raw specs. This particular model has a 15.6 inch 4K display, which MSI says covers 99% of the sRGB color gamut, a 512 gigabyte M.2 NVMe SSD for a boot drive, as well as a one terabyte 5400 RPM hard drive, but there's also a version with a 1080p display and 128 gigs uh, boot SSD if you're primarily interested in gaming and not content creation, which is what you would want like the 4K display for. It's got a 57 watt hour battery powered by this pretty thin power brick. The notebook itself measures 380 by 249 by 17.7 millimeters. For ports on the right side, we've got a Kensington lock, ethernet port, SD card reader, three USB 3.0 ports, and separate headphone and mic jacks. On the right side, we've got the power adapter plug, mini display port, full HDMI, USB type C 3.1 with Thunderbolt 3 support, a type A USB 2 port, and way at the front, the power button. But why? That's the question. Why would you put the power button there? It used to be here, uh, where MSI still, for some reason, has an LED power icon. Now it's here on the side. I'd say I accidentally pressed this button just while moving the notebook around a minimum of eight or nine times over the course of, of me using it. You can probably hear the fan a lot better now. Right there. Uh, I think they put it there to get it out of the way of the cooling system or because there's like reversible laptops out there that kind of need to have it on the side like that, but this laptop doesn't reverse, although the display does lay flat, which is rare for a gaming laptop. Just, MSI, can you move the power button back to the center above the keyboard where it was before? I literally, like, I, I'm going off script here for a second. I pressed this thing so many times by accident and it was like I was like installing something or run, running a benchmark and I just like moved the laptop a little bit, hit the button. Anyways, if you're not an idiot like me, maybe you would do better with that. Speaking of the keyboard, I guess I talked about the keyboard before I went on my rant. It's the usual Steel Series affair with a full numpad and pretty decent travel distance and tactility for a notebook so thin. Yes, I looked up tactility, it is a word. Uh, typing was an enjoyable experience, uh, suffice to say. It's got RGB lighting, not for individual keys, but you can customize the keyboard zones to your liking through the Dragon Center app. The trackpad is okay, it got the job done and didn't cause me major problems, but in terms of smoothness and responsiveness, it's not quite up there with the MacBooks and Dell XPS trackpads. And also, it's off to the left, which I don't appreciate. I would love to see an MSI laptop with a trackpad centered. Uh, for once, but all this stuff about the trackpad is probably moot since you'll probably be using a mouse with this thing most of the time anyways. Above the keyboard there's a grill, but that's actually not for the speakers, it's for cooling. The speakers are on the bottom and those are also not the worst, but I had to go looking for the bass because I could not find it. Highs and mids for days, bass, it was a no-show. Even with the audio software's bass boot, boost, bass boost, maxed out. But again, if you're gaming on this thing, you're probably gonna be using a headset anyways 
which I did most of the time. All right, time to talk about games, or games, as I like to call them. As a general rule, the GTX 1060 inside the Stealth Pro is extremely adept at running most games we tested at 1080p and high settings, if not ultra settings. And yes, I tested everything at 1080p because 4K on a 15.6 inch screen is obviously overkill. That's why I said earlier, if you're getting the 4K version, it's because you also want to do content creation there's really no reason to run 4K on a 15 inch panel. As you'll see, you'll most likely have room to bump up the resolution to 2048 by 1152 or even 1440p uh, if you have the headroom in performance. In Overwatch on epic settings at 1080p, I got a minimum of 66 FPS with an average 96 FPS. Ashes of the Singularity at high settings got 47.7 with DirectX 12. Rise of the Tomb Raider 77.3 with high settings in DirectX 12. For synthetic benchmarks in Unigen Heaven in 4K with extreme tessellation, we got a score of 18.9, which puts it just below the MSI GTX 1060 desktop card we reviewed earlier. In Unigen Valley, we got 56.2 on the Extreme HD preset. 3D Mark Extreme and Time Spy got 4796 and 3613, respectively, 3613, that is. Uh, but again, just below, that's just below the desktop 1060, but uh, not too much. So like I said, this thing will pretty much handle anything you can throw at it in 1080p. The thermal system in the Stealth Pro does its job excellently. The chassis obviously warms up while gaming, but the notebook's method of drawing cool air through the top and the front, I think? and shooting hot air out of the back and sides means I don't actually feel that heat while resting my hands on the keys. So nice job on the thermals, MSI. Now you'll no doubt have noticed that the GS63 VR has VR right there in its name, and yes, that is because it is VR ready, the GTX 1060 inside, qualifying the Stealth Pro for VR according to Oculus's minimum required specs at the very least, which you need a 970 for. Unfortunately, we didn't have a VR headset on hand to try it out, but I think the benchmarks speak for themselves. We will have a headset when we review MSI's VR1 backpack, which we should be getting soon though, so stay tuned for that. 3D Mark's VR Mark and Base Mark's VR Benchmark aren't out yet, both of them, so to make sure I tested at least one VR thing, I ran Steam VR's performance test, which said the Stealth Pro was more than qualified, even though it insisted on saying it was using Intel integrated graphics instead of the 1060, which was weird, so even after I forced it to use the GPU. So I guess even if you want to run VR without your GPU, you can as well. Don't do that. Motion sickness. All right, what can we say about this in conclusion? This is a beastly gaming laptop in a very small form factor. Could MSI work on the trackpad and the power button placement and the overall build quality? Sure, but how much do you want this thing to cost anyway? It starts at 1700 bucks US and goes up to 2000 for this version with the 4K screen and 512 gig boot drive. Bump that up to 2200 and 2500 for us Canadians because life is hard up here. But for that money, you know what you're getting because I've told you throughout this whole video. Which is now over. Thanks for watching, guys. Click over here for previous videos and check us out on Twitter over here. Am I in the right spot? Yes, I am. But as always, like the video if you liked it, comment below for fans with benefits, and subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX. Now, uh, I'm gonna go take this around the office and see if I can win some bets with people who think it probably can't run games very well because it's so thin. And I'm gonna say, oh, you bet, what do you, you want to bet that this thing can run good games? And they'll be like, no way, not that thing, not that piece of crap. And I'm like, haha, are you in for a big surprise? Just you watch, you jerks. All right, see you later.